Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Man the Maker. Welcome to a new Let's Play series for the game Nowhere Profit. This game was released uh, just this past weekend. Developed by Sharkbomb Studios and released by No More Robots. It is a post-apocalyptic survival strategy. Okay, survival is probably not right. We are trying to survive. We are leading a caravan through the wastes. The core of the gameplay is kind of based around deck building, right? I mean, you, lot, you guys see this everywhere nowadays, you know, deck, deck building is in, it's hot right now, it's a great way to uh, design a deck if you ask me. And um, yeah, one thing that I do really appreciate about this game that does set it apart a little bit from the other ones is that um, your deck is not permanent. Your deck are your followers as you go out into the world. And if these people die, or animals, or whatever it may have you, they're gone from your deck. So you gotta think about that quite a bit more than you normally do. You know, you can't just like throw out the attack and be like, done, and move on. You gotta really think about kind of the idea of sacrifice. I think that plays a bigger role in preservation as well, in kind of a slightly more unique way. Also has an FTL kind of feel to it as you go from node to node and uh, unlock things and explore things and encounter events and get into fights and such. Full disclosure, I have not played this game. <laughs> I have watched a couple of videos, so I'm not completely naked. But honestly, the game really, really, really appeals to me. I mean, the aesthetic of it, this game oozes style. I'm just going to say that. So I'm really excited about that. The gameplay also seems right up my alley, and hopefully it does... Uh, appeal to you too as well so we're gonna go ahead and dive in you know I mean again like I said probably going to make a slight fool of myself only a little bit I mean like just just like a little bit I have watched it I have watched a little bit I'm gonna probably get my butt kicked but hopefully things do go our way so we're gonna go ahead and just start a new game boom you're about to set on a dangerous journey across a hostile planet. Soma is filled with greedy people and raging beasts that's unlikely you will reach your goal right away. Be prepared to lead multiple caravans across the wastes. Let's go ahead and start our journey. This world is broken. Put on my narrator voice. Only the strong and ruthless prevail in this land of ruins. Hope is for the naive and the weak. Until I heard its call from the night sky. The falling star spoke of power and forgotten knowledge. It told me where it would land long before it smashed into Soma. Its voice was weak and fragmented. But it carried the promise of a way out, a path to change and it gave me a purpose. It took me weeks to cross through Soma's wilderness. Then its impact shook the heavens. Hissing with heat, the sand around it turned into glass. Then it spoke of the crypt for the last time. <laughs> All right, guys, we're ready to get back to the, ga the game. All right, get him. Got to neutralize there a little bit. And we're back. I'd spoken to machines before, but none had been this powerful, this keen, yet it was dying. And blue light had painted a mandala into the dusty air. With this fractal symbol, it showed me glimpses of ancient knowledge from before the crash. Etched in hard light, it told me how to find and open the crypt, this place of legend. Then the fallen star spoke to me. You help power, safety, and knowledge in the crypt. You lead them. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Tilt. All right, continue. As the machine died and its light slowly subsided, I could hear words of prayer and mantras all around me. Others must have seen the trail of fire, heard the star's whispers, and followed it here too. Their eager faces told me that they had heard the machine speak to me. The prophet, the prophet, they chanted. And so my followers had found me, and together we would find the crypt. Set out. Namaste, my prophet. Let me be your humble guide on this journey. I will tell you everything I know to help you make this privilege 
pilgrimage, a successful one. The tutorial is on, I will say. Let's start, uh, that's what this little individual here is going to be doing. Let's start our journey to the crypt by opening the map. Open the map, sounds great. This is your map. You can pick the next destination on our way to the crypt. Simply move the map and select a spot to learn more about it. Traveling costs us food and hope. Make note of the difficult terrain which is visible by the colored roads on the map. Fights here will have more hazards but can also lead to better rewards. Interesting. To get close to the crypt, we need to reach the large milestone location in the upper right corner of the map. So we can see... Boop, boop. This is our first destination. We gotta make it through here. Now, as they say, here's the map. Got many different nodes going on. We can kind of see what's going on in, in them. So that is different from FTL. And we can also see people here. This, that. I don't actually know. I mean, these are obviously fights, and this is food. Do we go the harder way? I think you want me to click here. Yeah, we're there. We're gonna go the harder way. Into the mountains. <laughs> Maybe we will die immediately. Who knows? The sun was setting <clears throat> as we noticed a dark plume of smoke not far away. Sneaking closer, we saw a band of raiders celebrating their victory over a small roaming caravan of a size not unlike ours. We spotted two sets of clan sigils, two separate raider groups. They were currently busy splitting up the loot, batteries, valuables, and slaves. What should we do, Prophet? We can't sneak past them, said Ella, an individual inside of our party. We could take out their leaders free the slaves or seize the loot um i think we want to seize the loot actually i mean like we know again i have no idea what is actually more important over here take out the leaders that give us the batteries batteries are like currency i know that much but the valuables items and slaves more followers let's get more followers let's be uh a little bit humanitarian here. We backed up and tried to get close to the chained slaves, then swiftly began our assault. One of the slaves, bruised but still wearing a warrior's turban, noticed us and promptly started shoving a fellow prisoner to distract the guards. What in all hells are you up to? Do you want to taste the whip again? He yelled. The guards turned towards the scene, so our onslaught caught them by surprise. Fight! And this is how the combat plays out, right? As we said, it is a card game. In battle, you need to play your cards to survive. Cards curse energy. You can see them there. We've got three. They've got three. Which is refilled and increased by one at the start of each of your turns. So think of like her hearthstone or something, right? You just get slowly escalating uh, mana or energy. Many of your cards are followers, which then play join the fight on your side, but be careful. They may fall in battle. And I'll, I'll even comment extra on that. They can die once and they become broken, I think is the keyword. But then, uh, if they die again, say in the next fight, they are permanently dead. They are gone. You can do things to heal your people and bring them back from uh, being broken. But, you know, just uh, you have to be a bit more careful. You also have access to your leader cards on the right-hand side. These are your abilities and they are vital to gain an immediate advantage in combat. To win, you have to attack to reduce the enemy leader to zero health while avoiding that same fate. Be aware that any damage you take remains even after combat, right? They've got six hit points. We have 30. We're obviously in a much stronger position than they are um, to be able to kill them. But again, we can't just throw our health around because it does continue. So we've started off. We've got three mana. Apparently, uh, we will just have to go ahead and start. Now, we got three cards in our left part of the hand and two in our right. This is from our class, right? So you can do things that influence what this is, as well as when you get further into the game, when you start games not in the tutorial, you can also pick different convoys to start off with. Looks like we are a bit more defensive, right? We've got a taunt here, taunt. We have to become attacked if we play him. He deals three damage, he's got three hit points. It's Ella, oh, hey Ella. We got Crash Jagger here, costs four mana, we can't actually play it, but a bit more health, a bit more damage, and we can heal ourselves, or rather all our friendly followers. When the unit is played onto the battlefield, a bit of a battle cry, again, if we want to draw analogies to Hearthstone here. So I think what we're going to do, first of all, we can also look, we can just draw a convoy card. We can just draw another one of these cards. We can also just take a shot at anyone, right? If they had 
units in the field, we can shoot them. We can also just shoot her. Now again, it should be noted that when you play a card, you actually put them into the battlefield, right? And they can always be attacked unless they are behind something. Not nothing, uh, nothing available here. Or if they're behind another unit, maybe some other special abilities that I'm aware of. I'm not aware of. We're gonna go with this guy, right? He's got three damage, three health. We don't wanna play our healer because we can heal with him later. So we're gonna just drop him out right in the beginning. Ah, proud warrior, Ella. Followers enter combat exhausted and can't act immediately. Call it your summoning sickness, if you will. Starting with your next turn, this fellow will refresh and be ready to attack or move. We've got two sets of numbers. Yeah, we just went that. They lose health, they, go, they are destroyed. Their positions are critical. Only the first unit on each row can be attacked. It is in frontline position and marked with three spikes. Yeah, exactly. So I can put guys behind him and only he can actually be attacked. So that's how we're gonna end our turn. She's gonna do something. Dropping out a scout here. And a worker. Now we go. We have drawn a bunch of cards. Now we're ready to fight. Your warrior is ready. See the yellow triangle symbolizing that indeed. Dragging your followers onto an enemy unit. But they attack back. Let's attack the enemy leader and we don't suffer retaliation damage. And we can also move them. They can only take one action. So you can move them, but you know, it's not ideal to do that. Now. What we want to think about is, can we, in fact, kill anybody here? Now, unfortunately, we cannot kill her, right? We have him that can deal three. We can do quick shot, and we can do static charge, dealing one damage to all leaders and units. Right? We would take damage, you would take one, one, one. I don't want him to die if I can help it, right? I can uh, try and draw a Fury card. So I think what that means, what we could do is Static Charge, Quick Shot, take her out. He'll be at two, which means that you won't be able to kill him. She could potentially shoot him next turn, but it gives us a chance to preserve ourselves. And I think, I think we are going to make a move like that. Um, we can also just draw a leader card. And I think we're actually going to do that. Probably just put him behind here. Oh, I should have done that in a different... Actually, no. That was that. That's great. We can now do three damage to the face. Two more. And take her out. We didn't take any damage. We didn't lose... Um, we didn't get broken, which is great, right? You really want to put emphasis on trying to preserve certain cards. Some cards you get, and you can kind of consider them throwaway, right? You might be like, okay, fine. Um, we got some vegetables, and we got plant fibers giving us 11 batteries. Oh, did I? No, we got both. We also gained three experience. Boom. Nice. The last of the jailers fell lifelessly to the floor. We quickly broke the chains of the prisoners, ready to overpower the remaining balance. Bandits together, but when we turned to face them, they had vanished. Kenley using the chaos of the fight to grab all the loot and escape. We got more slaves. Great. Uh, move on. Good work, my prophet. Our people are safe. However, some of our followers may have suffered wounds. We did not. They would be red down here if they had. We can take the time to check our decks. We can just... Select one of the cards at the bottom of the screen to inspect and edit your convoy deck. Yeah, so we can, for example, what, just click here? No. Here. Here you can find your battle-ready followers, indeed. So this allows us to edit our decks. These are cards that are not in the battle deck, right? We don't have to use everything here. You can just take them out, which makes it very nice, right? Like, just accumulating more cards. It's not like Slay the Spire, where you can... Uh, over overfill dilute is the word I'm looking for. You can dilute your deck. You don't have to worry about that. Um, got distracted by something. Sorry. Uh, you, <laughs> you don't have to worry about diluting it because you can always pull people out. And in fact, it's quite useful uh, to do that. I think at times because if say our somebody useful the scavenger savant is broken, we don't want him to die. We so we can take him out. We can just take him out. You're now no longer in the deck, and he won't be at risk of that. Of course, you want to be careful, because you can just run out of cards as well. 
we picked up a couple of new people. These are the three slaves that we got. We got a new scout. We got soldier who's got first strike. Ooh. Soldier? Soldier. You gonna tell me what you do? Nope. Right clicking. Just put you back in there. There you go. When attacking with enough damage to kill the target, first strike unit doesn't suffer retaliation damage. We also got a phalanx here. He's a beefy boy. Reduce the cost of a random convert cut in your hand by one. He does cost a lot, but he's big. And it would probably be nice to kind of have a late game powerhouse. And I think... We have scouts. Ah. Eh. I don't know if I want to just start dumping cards into my deck so much. We can, like, take some time to look at it, but I think at this point, we'll just add everyone. We'll just add everyone. I think I'm actually okay with that. Um, yeah. And I, we'll, we'll see what our cards do as we get further into the game. Right? I don't want to spend the whole time just looking at that. So we will not do that. Um, we will kind of also take a look over here. So we can learn about ourselves. There we are. Fortunately, we have neither enough experience to level up nor equipment to use. Yeah. So, right, we can see here also our deck. Often it's a lot of um, attacking things, but also some buffs. Right? Target Flower gains some stuff. Neural Shiv just destroys something. Again, we're not going to take too long. We'll just kind of uncover things, things as we go along. We will be able to level up. You can also get uh, different equipment, but we're not going to worry about that. And you can manage your convoy. You can definitely do some things here. Heal leader, heal followers. I believe there's other things that you can do in your camp. I mean, you can inspect. Yeah, we just have plant followers. Yeah. Things we are hoping on. We can share luxury items if we get low on hope. Don't worry about that now. We don't have any. And also, we can sell these for money. Right, let's look at our stats, but not really anything interesting there. So let's uh, let's leave our camp and carry on. I mean, we're going to go here. This is where we are. And it's going to be more slaves. Now, more slaves probably use more food. The question is, do we want to go out of our way? There's people here. Yeah, let's let's uh, source for new followers. Beasts has an active market. Huh. It's a township. All right. Can I click on this and tell me? Village has an active market. Teacher Shrine has an active market. Do we want to go out into here? Source for new followers of beasts. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hesitate going too long. This is just food. I think we're just gonna go this way now. Let's just let's go. Eating a bunch of food. Our convoy passed through a territory marked with colorful flags and bone trophies. We were just discussing whether locals might consider our presence an offense when a group of hill tribe raiders descended upon us with whooping war cries. We have ourselves another fight here. Ready ourselves for battle. Um, you can select one of the cards to adjust. Yeah. Um, before we face our enemy. Yeah, we can edit stuff. We're not going to do that. You can see here. A little bit tougher. One more hit point. Still not much. Riders are quick and well organized. So he's a feral writer. So these guys are all going to have kind of just different decks. We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to go ahead and dive into the fight. We have access to our two decks. We draw one card at the start of your turn and up to six convoy and four leader cards. So you want to bear that in mind, right? You want to keep trying to cycle your cards. If you fill up, you're kind of wasting things. If you need to draw a card, but your hand is full, nothing happens. But if you draw and your deck is empty, you take damage. Yeah. Also, you can replace cards. Like the Enforcer here, we're going to get rid of. I'm almost tempted to get rid of the Crash Jacker. The Raider is okay. Crash Jacker. Kind of expensive. Yeah, I think we'll keep it though. And hope that we get something cheaper. We did not. Spark Shaman will deal one damage to all other followers and constructs when he enters. So we also have some special things, right? We can see here, this is actually Jagged Shards. When a unit enters battle as a neighbor, deal one damage to that unit. Whereas these are just, uh, they're just rocks, right? We just got rock and a boulder. But we can put people behind here and they are defended. Though I don't know, can they attack from behind cover? I, I think so. Um, what do we want to do? I mean, we're obviously going to start off with a, our raider cannot Cannot attack from here? I don't think so. 
I think we're going to put our raider over here. This way, if we want to, we can put somebody in front. We can also scrap a card, right? If we want to just, like, ditch something, we can do it one per turn. We're not going to do that. We are just going to go ahead and end our turn. We spent all of our mana. Let's go ahead and see what they got. Wild Hand. Spawning a beast who just dies from the Jagged Shards. Thank you. He has gained Taunt, which is actually fine with me. As long as they're in the front, they will be able to Taunt. Yes, no other units nor the leader can be attacked. I understand. Wow, Righteous Strength as well. That... Made you quite beefy. Um, let's think now. This is quite expensive, right? Pretty, things are, things are way too expensive over here. Now, if we attack this guy... There's our timer, we're gonna ignore that for now. If we attack this guy... We would, uh, die right now. However, I could give him plus one, plus two. I could give him plus one, plus two, and we would actually then survive. Which I'm tempted to do. Go ahead and smack into that guy. Now you are vulnerable, right? He can just do some kind of quick shot and be able to mess with us. Um, I'm tempted to just save it. It's a shame we got no mana, but we could scrap the Phalanx. Devoted Guard. Okay. Your name is Ella? Your name is Ella. Popular name. Um, yeah, we already did it. That's fine. All right, let's go ahead and end it. Hopefully he doesn't just blow us up. Putting out the Sharam Acolyte, who is shielded. Don't know what shielded does. And drawing a card. Not be targeted by enemy leader cards, but no matter, no mind, because we can just kill you. Right? You see here, like you can really, you can really go for it um, early in the game. But as these guys get tougher, uh, they will not <laughs> die so easily. So we've been rather fortunate so far. We did gain some experience. Dead bodies of our enemies littered the scene. Move on. Got some food, which is nice. Um, I think I'm going to go and take the encounter here. Because we're doing quite well. Might as well take the encounter, get the experience. But we are actually out of time. My, my, my. I almost forgot. And that is um, that is episode one of Nowhere Profit. And, uh, I mean, again, this is the first time I've actually played the game. And feeling pretty good about things. <laughs> we're doing... We've done well so far. And... Again, I've watched the game, so I'm not going in completely blind. But it's... I mean, playing the game is a... I, I'm really having fun. That's what I'm trying to say here. This game is fantastic. I'm really, really a big fan of it so far. Uh, I will jump in and say the one gripe that I've heard mentioned um, in the past is about the AI. We have yet to see really terrible AI. Uh, they did kind of sacrifice one of their units last time uh, against that obstacle. But, uh, you know, the game is in early access. It should also be noted, I think. <laughs> actually, I don't actually know. I'm pretty sure it is in early access. I can, I can check this real quick. Maybe. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Well, whatever it is, it is fantastic. No brain, you know, we haven't encountered any gaming bugs but i'm getting off track here just want to say love the game hope you guys are enjoying it as well we're going to play this game i think a fair amount on this channel and we're going to play this this run all the way through to the end uh for sure whatever end that may be and uh probably be coming back to the game a fair amount i think it is it is it's right up my alley and i hope it is up yours if it is and you like what you see here do the youtube things you know likes Give me some comments. Let me give me some ideas. If you guys have played, you know, I'm always open. I take in your suggestions. I love to learn. Please teach me. So put that down below in the comments. Anything else you might want to share? How's your day going? Et cetera, et cetera. I do my best to answer um, almost all comments. And uh, I'm going to stop rambling now one more time. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'm having a blast and I will see you next time. Until then, my name is Man the Maker. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day.